Hello, and welcome back to the Tomcat track at ApacheCon at home. I'm Christopher Schultz, and today I will be talking about migrating from AJP to HTTP. Um, I don't think, no, there are no other speakers in here, so I'm kind of moderating myself. Uh, I'll try to switch back and forth between the slides and the chat so I can see if you guys have any questions while we move through this. Um, I've not given this presentation before, and it's a short format, so uh, I'm going to try to go as quickly as I can because there are a lot of things to cover. And we'll start a little bit with the background of the Apache JSERV protocol. If you were curious what AJP stood for, that's what it is. Um, it was originally built uh, pre-2000, and there are, are because it's been in use for so long, there are a lot of people that think that it's really the way to proxy connections between HTTPD and Tomcat. And actually in the initial development of um, the Apache JSERV server, um, which is what it was called before, I think it was called that before Tomcat, maybe it's only the JSERV protocol. At any rate, uh, the initial builds didn't include HTTP support. So it was the only way to proxy it for a short period of time. The current version that we're all using, which is AGP 1.3, we always say AJP 13, but it's actually 1.3. It was released almost 20 years ago and essentially has not changed since then. There have been proposals to upgrade it and add all the things that everybody wants, but everybody just kind of shrugged and said, eh, it's working fine the way that it is. Let's not you know, mess up a good thing. So um, the protocol itself is packet oriented and it's binary. Um, that's going to come back to us in a few minutes. The data is encoded uh, with multiple tags. So essentially, there's information about the connection, like the proxy information. Uh, there's information about the, the content. And remember that since we're proxying HTTP, we the content includes the headers. And because this was specifically set up to proxy Java, uh, proxy to a Java application, uh, AGP actually has the ability to inject request attributes. So not parameters like you would normally see in either a, uh, a get URL or, or in a post um, request entity, uh, but actually set attributes in the request for that particular request lifecycle. Uh, and then of course, the actual data for the request and the response bodies is proxy as well. This is actually very similar to HTTP2. Um, if you listened to John Frederick's presentation yesterday about HTTP2, he describes about how the uh, HTTP2 actually takes a text protocol, HTTP, and essentially converts it into a binary protocol. And one of the ways that it does that is by doing optimization of header names. Um, the, the way that H2 does it is a little bit different. But in this one, um, there, are, there are a series of well-known HTTP headers that simply have short codes for them. For example, um, the accept and content length headers are here in this slide. Um, there's a similar uh, way that attribute names are sent over. So instead of the entire text of the name and, and the header in the previous example, being sent across the wire, uh, there's just a well-known numeric identifier for that item. Um, lots of the information is sent as request attributes, per particularly all the proxying information, the, um, uh, the TLS information, the protocol, I believe information about the, uh, the remote client, et cetera, is all sent through those request attributes. And connections are expected to be long-lived. Now, that should be obvious because it's a proxying protocol, uh, but I wanted to point out that generally speaking, when you open an AJP connection between a reverse proxy and a Tomcat or a, a, any node, really, um, that, that connection is expected to last a good long time.
mod JK is the HTTPD module which implements uh, the AJP protocol for Apache HTTPD. Uh, I put HTTPS in there, and that should say HTTPD. Uh, there's also a module for Microsoft IIS, and I'm much less familiar with that. So I'm primarily going to be talking about uh, the mod JK module for HTTPD. This provides proxying using HT AJP, of course, that's the whole point. It has existed for a very long time. Um, and it is a module that is technically outside of the HTTPD project. It's maintained by the Tomcat community uh, currently. It's very flexible. It's very reliable. It has lots and lots of options. And uh, I personally, as well as many, many, many other uh, companies and individuals have been using it for years. AJP actually has some very nice things. When you're using the default mod JK configuration, you get a lot of stuff. I don't want to say for free, but you get it out of the box without having to add additional configuration. Mod JK's default configuration includes things that most people need. Um, the requests, the, the HTTP request in the, as accessible by, to the servlet is populated with all the information that you would expect it to. So for example, when you want to get the remote host or the remote client IP, it's not giving you the proxy, the information about the reverse proxy, it's giving you the information about the actual client, for example. But there's a bunch of problems with AJP. And uh, I don't remember how many slides I have about the shortcomings, but there are quite a few. Um, if you're using HTTP 1 or 0 0.9 or something like that, uh, it's great. But if you want to do HTTP 2 or WebSocket, those are basically impossible to do over AJP. Uh, I think there was an attempt to try to make WebSocket work over it, but uh, everybody gave up and just said you need to really use something else. There's also zero security. There's no authentication. There's no encryption. These things can be added using other products, but they are not particularly convenient to do. Um, let's see. Right. I'm pointing out again that connections are unencrypted, and I'm doing so because just because the protocol is binary doesn't mean that no one can read it. So if you have AJP connections going across your network. Anybody who has access to that network can see everything that's going on. Generally speaking, you're going to terminate TLS at your reverse proxy, which means that the information flowing between your proxy and your origin servers is visible to anyone who is on that network. So if you think you have encryption, maybe you don't. There's also the idea in AJP of a secret the secret is a token that the reverse proxy will pass to the origin server. That's Tomcat. Um, uh, just letting the backend server know that the ver reverse proxy knows what that token is. But it's sent in plain text. So it's essentially zero security. It's, it's kind of like putting a sign on your door that says, uh, please don't walk in. Those connections coming into Tomcat are inherently trusted. Um, the other side of the no authentication coin uh, from the reverse proxy is that the there's no authentication on the origin server either. A lot of the information that's coming in is accepted without any question because there's no possibility of any authentication or authorization. It's just the data comes in and Tomcat either has to trust it or not and not trusting it means that your connection doesn't work. There's also, there's also some other information that's accepted without question. For example, those request attributes. Some of those request attributes have very special meaning to the servlet container and sometimes to the application. And uh, you don't need to look any further back than CVE 2020-1938, which um, if you want to Google that, you'll find that it's the, uh, 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 I don't know how it was uh, termed at the time, but it's essentially uh, data exfiltration. So like arbitrary file reads, oops, um, 
anyone who has used AJP for a long time sort of knows that you can send in those request attributes and anyone who's used the servlet specification for a long time knows that some servlet or uh, some request attributes can be used to control the server. Well, if you have a wide open AJP uh, server, then anyone who can make a request against that can use those two things for uh, nefarious purposes. So practical AJP configuration, you should protect your endpoints. And some suggestions to do that is only bind to localhost and use S-Tunnel. So this adds authentication and encryption to a connection that otherwise would not have it. Um, and when it comes to doing HTTP2 or WebSocket, you're just going to have to not use those protocols, at least through AJP. Theoretically, you could proxy your HTTP1 traffic through AJP and then do a different tunnel for your WebSocket and H2, but uh, that's just more complexity. So if you're going to set up those other tunnels, you may as well make other arrangements. I'm going to do a quick time check. See where I am. Cool. So why should we suffer all of these slings and arrows to continue to use AJP? There's really no that no advantage that AJP has over, for example, H2 or um, frankly, even HTTP1 at this point. You get that extra out of the box configuration, which is nice. Um, but really, it just comes down to people have been using it forever, so they're continuing to use it, and they continue to recommend it for others. By the way, before we continue, do you need a reverse proxy? Just checking. Tomcat is not slow. Tomcat is great at serving static contact, and Tomcat is very secure. So if you have a reverse proxy in there just to just because you were told to do so, you might want to reconsider whether you need that at all. Because if you have a single node server, maybe you don't need the proxy. Just saying. So the goals here, and I guess you could say it's either my goals or the goals of my presentation, is to number one, eliminate the need for mod JK to exist. It's not bundled with HTTPD as a separate release cycle. It's managed by a different community of users. Um, we don't even produce binaries anymore. For years and years, we produced binaries, but then the number of architectures that needed to be supported got out of control. So the kind folks, for example, at Apache Lounge are essentially the de facto uh, Windows build uh, farm for Apache uh, mod JK. And if you're using Linux, you're usually getting it from your package manager, or maybe you're just building it from source. However, mod proxy, mod proxy AJP does exist. It comes from HTTPD, and it's included in every distribution of HTTPD that you could get, whether binary or source. So my second goal is to eliminate the need for AJP itself to exist and just get everybody to move over to something else. So I'm going to check and see if there are any questions thus far. Those seem off topic, so I'm going to keep going. Um, so my methodology here is first to switch from mod JK to mod proxy AJP. So that's switching products, but not protocols. And that's going to require a lot of configuration changes to uh, Apache HTTPD. But uh, depending on your configuration, you may not have to change Tomcat at all. So that's a win. Um, in my opinion, it's going to require some improvements to both mod proxy and mod proxy balancer, which I'll get to in a minute. Once you've switched from mod proxy, excuse me, once you switched from mod JK to mod proxy AJP, you can then make the switch to mod proxy HTTP. And that requires very few, if actually, definitely requires changes to HTTPD configuration, but that's when the changes occur in the Tomcat configuration. So this is basically two steps. I'll back up a slide. First, we're going to switch products. One is going to be um, the module that you're using in H Apache HTTPD, 
And the second thing you'll do is you will switch protocols. And that achieves my goals of getting rid of the product and the protocol. So to use mod proxy, there are lots of changes to the directives that you are used to using if you've been using mod JK for a long time. Uh, JK mounts will generally turn to proxy pass and proxy pass reverse um, directives in your configuration. Your worker properties are going to turn into either directives themselves, or they're going to turn into attributes of those directives. I'll have some examples later. The load balancer workers are just going to use mod proxies load balancing system, which I actually like a little bit better uh, than mod JK. And you might also want to consider uh, using proxy error override, which I think I'm going to get to in a second. Here is a list of very common configuration options with the mod JK configuration shown on the left and the equivalent mod proxy configuration shown on the right. So for example, if you'd like to make sure that sticky sessions are enabled, you need to set the proxy path parameters to, which I'll get to in a sec, um, to sticky session equals J session ID or that vertical bar means or J session ID. So that will allow you to specify the cookie name or the path parameter name. And um, I wonder if I spelled that right. The S colon path the limb equals on. I'll have to double check that. Um, creating a load balancer worker requires that you use the configuration shown on the right where you define a load balancer with a name. That's what that balancer colon slash slash LB name. That's the load balancer name. And then inside the proxy definition, you will specify all of your various uh, uh, members of that, uh, of that load balancing cluster. And then once you've defined that cluster, you need to use a proxy pass. Hope you guys can see my pointer here. Um, but you'll need to use a proxy pass. And that set th that actually mounts this URL and sets up the proxy to this thing, which actually references the balancer that you've just set up. And if you want to set the route for a particular worker, you need to set the balancer member parameter route. There, uh, uh, as you might imagine, there's extensive documentation on the worker parameters, and the URL for that is at the bottom of the slide. Proxy path it passes both more and less flexible than JK mount. Um, JK mount works very similar to the way that anyone who has done servlet mappings is used to. For example, um, extension matches, um, exact matches, and prefix matches and things like that. Uh, but proxy pass always uses prefix matches. The nice thing is you can use proxy pass match. That gives you a lot of freedom, but it also introduces regular expressions, which depending on your needs and in your environment may end up uh, representing a bit of a performance hit. So um, in Egal's presentation earlier today where he was talking about Nginx, uh, he suggests that if you want to use um, complicated, let's say, uh, mappings, you could just convert all of your mappings into exact matches for everything. So you'd have a very large number of exact matches, but they will all execute pretty quickly. Um, you are probably going to need more proxy pass directives than JK mounts. So when you convert from one format to another, you're gonna, your configuration will become more verbose. At least that's been my experience every time I've tried to do that. So the same URL mapping caveats exist with mod JK, which is essentially don't remap your URL. If you want, I'll back up. If you want to map slash app to something, make sure you're matching, make sure you're proxying it to the same thing. If you wanna turn foo into bar, you're just going to go down a long, sad path that will probably never end and never be right. The JK status worker is replaced by the balancer manager. Um, the balancer manager 
is actually a part of mod proxy, which is distinct from the protocol handler. So in, with mod JK, mod JK handles both the proxying and the load balancing, uh, whereas those are done by two separate modules in HTTPD. One of them is mod proxy balancer, and one of them is mod proxy AJP, which refers to the protocol. So um, by switching to mod proxy AJP, that allows us to remove mod JK. Almost everything stays the same uh, other than the configuration. Um, the protocol stays the same, for example, and I would consider this to be an evolution, not exactly a revolution. So the quick cookbook for this is make sure you have your load module in there. You'll get, you're going to need probably a bunch of modules. Mod proxy is the parent. Mod proxy AJP is the protocol handler. Mod proxy balancer is the load balancer. And mod LB method by requests is just one of many uh, load balancing method plugins that you can use for mod proxy balancer. Um, there are others that you're welcome to research and use. You'll also need to rep replace your worker properties and your JK mounts with all of those uh, analogous things in mod proxy. Uh, and it's worth pointing out that when you set up your balancer members or when you're doing your mappings with without, you need to use the AJP colon slash slash prefix for your protocol. In Tomcat, there's essentially no changes. Tomcat's still using AJP. It's just a different module on the reverse proxy side. So a few other considerations are monitoring and scripting. And uh, I have some I have some code that I've presented at previous conferences and that I use in production all the time that can um, script the changes to workers in my cluster. And it does all of that through mod JK's um, capabilities. And uh, those are possible in uh, mod proxy balancer, um, but I haven't actually scripted any of that stuff yet, and I'm not sure what tools do exist to do that across a wide range of servers. I know you can log into the server and you can manually click through the interface and you can change the state of workers, um, but I, uh, I don't know what kind of automation is available right now. Also, um, mod JK is capable of sending the reverse proxy workers status to the Tomcat server. And it's very important when you want to, when you want to drain a Tomcat server of all of its users, there is a uh, load balancer draining valve and filter. Actually, I'm sorry, it's just a, it's just a valve. And what that does is when Tomcat detects that it has, it, its own node has been marked as disabled from the reverse proxy perspective, uh, you can configure Tomcat to start actively turning away new users so that their sessions don't get established on the node that's going down. And uh, my testing uh, showed that for a couple of hundred users on each of our Tomcat nodes, when we enabled that, we went from waiting sometimes up to eight hours for all of our users to go away before we had completely drained a node to sometimes it happening in as little as 45 minutes. So it's definitely worth doing. Um, there is a, there's an enhancement request <clears throat> in Bugzilla for that at 64338. And uh, I have a patch submitted that looks like it needs to be improved a little bit. So if anybody's interested in helping me out with that, uh, please take a look at that bug request going to do another time check and question check. 15 minutes. Thanks, Ago. Appreciate that. Why no one mentions HA proxy? I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> All right. Um, so switching from mod proxy AJP to HTTPD, get some new security options. This is nice. The protocol has changed. We get all that juicy authentication and authorization and encryption and all that kind of stuff. Um, we can also get more information from the reverse proxy, and we can conditionally decide to trust it. For example, if we want to accept the X forwarded header, we can do that or not. 
We also have much better protocol support. HTTP1.x is still certainly there. Um, WebSocket is uh, supported. It's not super great. Um, and uh, HTTP, HTTP2 looks like it is uh, likely to be supported in the very near future. So it's in HTTPD 2.5, but is not quite ready for prime time, looks like. So the changes in your Apache HTTP configuration are just literally search and replace for AJP colon slash slash and replace it with HTTP. Or if you'd like to add encryption and authentication and authorization, excuse me, not authorization, just authentication, you can do HTTPS. In Tomcat, you'll need to either re-enable or configure the HTTP connector. And to pick up that proxy information that you get for free from the AJP protocol, you'll have to enable the remote IP valve and the SSL valve. Those two things each provide configuration and consumption of the information that's coming across the wire from the reverse proxy. So a few other considerations for switching those protocols. Uh, is how you do your monitoring. So if you've been monitoring your AJP connections in one way, you're going to have to change that slightly to monitor your HTTP connections instead. Um, you might want to consider mutually authenticated TLS. So when I say mutually authenticated, what I mean is not only is the client, which is the reverse proxy in this situation, uh, trusting the server, which is the Tomcat node in this example, you can also uh, use a client certificate at the reverse proxy so that the proxy is also authenticating to the server at the same time. So that would allow you to have a very secure network between the reverse proxy and the Tomcat node. So when you use mod proxy instead of mod JK, there are some interesting new capabilities. I'm not sure if you'd really want to use these kinds of things, but hey, anything could happen. For example, you can use different protocols for each of the members in the balancer. If you want some of them to be using AJP and some of them to be using HTTP, go for it. You can even have fallback to static content, which is a little trick that I learned um, when setting up a proxy for a, uh, a content management system. I didn't trust the content management system to be able to respond super quickly all the time. And so we put a hot backup um, or a, a hot spare configured as a balancer member, and it actually performs a loopback request and gives nice error messages. Um, you can actually also use it as a static snapshot of a content management system, which we also did. So uh, I'm going to check for questions real quick. I see nothing. HTTP3, right. Yeah, well, <laughs> once we get HTTP2, we'll worry about that. Um, Mark points out, you do need to be careful that Tomcat can distinguish between requests originally received over HTTP and those originally received over HTTPS. It's absolutely true. Um, if you expect that all of your uh, connections from clients are going to be secure, then probably distinguishing between those is not a big deal. Um, but if you are expecting that the reverse proxy is going to handle insecure web traffic, that is non-HTTPS, and you uh, you definitely on the server want to tell the difference between the two. So uh, I haven't put a lot of thought into that, but certainly at the reverse proxy uh, level, you can send information from the reverse proxy to Tomcat to indicate whether or not the outside connection is secure, even if your proxying protocol has been secured. So thanks for pointing that out, Mark. Uh, I think I'm at the end. Awesome. OK, so for migrating from AJP, the plan was to migrate from mod JK to mod proxy AJP. Then once that's all working, uh, to migrate from mod proxy AJP to mod proxy HTTP. And this allows you to remove the complexity of your deployment and improve the security of your proxy connections. And those two things are actually kind of a big deal, even though they take up a very small amount of space on my screen. Um, 
we don't have builds of mod jk coming out very frequently but i know that if i could allow my package manager to just handle all of the dependencies and the updates and things like that i happen to build mod jk from source manually rather than using the package manager uh, maybe that's my problem uh, but it does sort of allow you to get rid of an extra component, which is quite nice. Um, AJP is not outrageously popular in the world. I mean, it's not used outside of Tomcat, as far as I know, uh, maybe JBoss as well. But uh, I think it's sort of time for this protocol to go away. It, it doesn't offer any advantages over things that are available today. And I think it offers some significant disadvantages. So what you see on your screen right now is my company's current um, deployment goal. And we don't want to change everything all at once. So we will be doing a mod JK to mod proxy migration first, and then an AJP to HTTP migration. And we'll probably do that over the course of several months and several releases of our software. So I very much encourage you all to do the same thing. And uh, I'm actively advocating for deprecation and ultimately removal of the AJP connectors from Tomcat in upcoming versions. Don't worry, Tomcat 8.5 is not going to suffer that fate. Tomcat 9, probably not. Mm, definitely not. Tomcat 10, probably that's when we're looking at sort of deprecating and encouraging people to move on. Um, and then who knows what will happen in the future. So. I would be happy to uh, entertain any questions that you guys might have. Let's see, why not go directly? Okay, so if that wasn't clear, the reason not to go directly from mod JK to mod proxy HTTP is so that it's basically stability. Um, if you have a if you have a simple environment and you want to take that step all at once, you're certainly welcome to do so. In a complicated environment, you may have hundreds or thousands of servers that might need to be reconfigured. Sure, you're using some kind of uh, scripting and um, orchestrated rollout for all of that. But if you want to concentrate on doing a small migration one at a time, not one at a time server, but one piece of the migration at a time, uh, I would recommend doing that because that allows you to make one change, instrument it, watch it for a while, make sure that, you know, performance isn't a problem or you have some configuration that doesn't make any sense and you didn't notice so you got to production. If you change everything, it's kind of difficult to tear it all out and undo it. But if you take it in slower steps, I think it's, um, I think it's a lower risk for the whole process. The roadmap to Sunset AJP support. There is no roadmap. Um, we are we are a loose collection of volunteers that have to convince each other of things. And so this is a topic which periodically comes up. There's no consensus to remove this yet, but it's being discussed. So it's not clear to me when and where that will happen. But I think ultimately AJP probably will be gone from Tomcat. It might take 10 years, but my recommendation would be to start getting comfortable with the alternative technologies now so that you're not in some kind of panic when it's time for it to go. Dan asks, have I completed the successful removal of mod JK? Uh, to clarify, do you mean in my own product or do you mean somewhere else? I'm assuming he means my own product. So no, we haven't done that yet. Um, in our development systems, we have some of them that are running mod proxy AJP and we have some of them that are still running mod JK. Uh, Mark suggests just sort of confirming what I said, deprecated in Tomcat 10.1 or 11, and then who knows what the future will hold. Do I foresee a challenge for folks committed to IIS fronting Tomcat if AJP is removed? Actually, no. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to claim ignorance when it comes to IIS. However, if IIS doesn't have an HTTP proxy module, then you shouldn't be using IIS at all. So I would imagine that moving from mod JK to HTTP proxy module, whatever in IIS, um, should not be 
a, a problem, but it won't allow this sort of two-step slower migration that I've laid out for, um, for Apache HTTPD. Any reports of issues with passing or reading the secret? Uh, I don't know of any uh, disclosures about that. Uh, generally speaking, I mean, even if you had a, even if you had a public AJP endpoint and you wanted to, um, or, and you were watching the traffic, uh, someone who was trying to get into your AJP endpoint and had the wrong secret, they, I guess they could brute force it. But um, you wouldn't want your you wouldn't want your AJP traffic traversing the internet. I think it would be a mistake that your AJP endpoint was available from the internet, uh, and not necessarily that you were doing something colossally foolish like proxying through the open internet. Um, but there certainly were uh, open AJP ports available on the internet. Who knows how many of them were honeypots versus actual production installations? But they were attackable. Um, I'm running short on time. I'm happy to answer the remaining questions. I do want to point out that uh, Mark is going to be talking about Tomcat and Jakarta in just a couple of minutes, um, but I'll go ahead and answer the questions that are here briefly, and then um, I'm going to jump over there. You're always welcome, again, to join us on the Slack channel and ask additional follow-up questions. Is there a way to forward authentication from HTTP to Tomcat with mod? Um, there is. I don't know the details uh, off the top of my head, but you can send that information. And I believe Tomcat can trust it uh, just the way that uh, it already does. Um, all right, looks like that's it. And I've got a minute to transition. So thank you very much for your time. Hope this has been informative. Slides are on online and uh, recording this presentation and others will be available in the next couple of weeks, I guess. Thanks very much.